I'm going to need some volunteers. And if I don't get volunteers, we're going to reinstate the draft. <laughs> I need a Mordecai. I need somebody who can be Mr. Mordecai, Esther's cousin who cared for her and took care of her. Okay, we got to... You can tie this and look at Mr. Neal. He's got on a robe from Egypt, is it? Yes. Oh, that goes around your head, dear. Okay. And we need the bad guy. We need Mr. Heyman. Who wants to be a bad guy? Who shall I draft? You can't, you can't volunteer. Paul, I saw you raise your hand. Come on up. I saw you raise your hand, that's all I can say. I don't see very well, I'm elderly. You all know the story, right? I, every time I look at this man, I think of him as a baby, because I was his babysitter when he was a little tiny thing. Neither am I. So. He gets, and we made cookies that look like those hats, so you look like a pirate, but that's okay. <laughs> and every time he shows up, what are we going to do? We're going to say what? Boo, hiss, okay. Let's see, who else do we have in here? Oh, and you, you get some money, too. You get the box of gold. Here you go. I need a couple of random people who can bow to Mordecai. No speaking roles here, don't worry. Who's going to come up and bow? Okay, come on, Miss Megan and Miss Sarah. You can bow to Mordecai, not to Mordecai, to Haman when he goes by. And now I need somebody else. I need a queen. I need an Esther. If she volunteers, you can make her queen. She's okay, Mom, take off that crown because you get to wear the big crown. Not yet. Because you're, yes, because you're, you're Hadassah. Wrap it around. Yeah, wrap. Yeah, you can still wear the crowns. Now this is how the Jewish community celebrates Purim. They act out the story and everybody goes boo and hiss and everybody wears crowns and makes noise in the synagogue. So, you're, you're all appropriate. Okay, how did this story begin? Do you remember? Mordecai and Hadassah, you go over here in your house. You're Mordecai. Here's your house and here's your niece, your cousin, your kinswoman. Okay. Remember, Mordecai loved her like a daughter because she had lost her parents years before. These are Jews who lived in what was called the diaspora, the dispersion. Jews who did not go back home after the exile. They're living in Persia, which is modern day what? Iran. But the Persian Empire was huge. And when he declared that edict, it had to be translated into many languages. And they had to send soldiers in many directions because it's empire was so huge. So we have Mordecai and Esther, and then we have Haman. Haman. <laughs> and he's going to go to the king. You're going to go to the king. Oh, no, no. Before you go to the king, we're going to, you can get up there, though. He was so important that everybody in the kingdom had to bow to him. So go up and bow to him. Okay, and Mordecai, you go by, and are you going to bow? Uh-oh, and Haman does not like that at all. So Haman goes to King Xerxes with a little bribe in his pocket there. He's got a box of money, and he says, you have these awful enemies, King Xerxes. You need to kill them all because they're, they're no good. And the king says, okay, sounds like a plan, right? All right. In the meantime, Mordecai, Mordecai, Mordecai good, Haman bad, Mordecai good, Haman bad. Let's say that together, Mordecai good. I tell you, if you were in the synagogue, they'd throw your behinds out over that one. Okay, now you two are going to take on another role. You're the, you're the eunuchs who are going to plot the assassination of the king. What? So come over here with me. And Mordecai overhears this conversation. Come over here, ladies. Or gentlemen, as the case may be. We gotta kill that king, don't you think? No, no. 
No, no, yes, 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 yes. yes I'm gonna, okay, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna poison him and then you're gonna hit him on the head, right? Okay. So he hears that. He's horrified. Oh no! And he calls his cousin Esther and he says, "Oh no! Wait, wait, wait! I forgot. Esther's got to marry the king first. I'm sorry." <laughs> See what happens when you get Mordecai and Haman up all confused. Queen Vashti, she's history. I could have had her come up, but in this story, do you want to be Queen Vashti? Okay, come on up. You can be Vashti. We're gonna. Oh, you already got the poison ready? Yeah, I got it ready. I had it. Okay. okay. And you're the drunken partiers. Let me hear some drunken partying out there. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They knew exactly what to do for that, but the boo and the hiss they got wrong. Okay. Order your wife to go in front of those people. Okay, so she's kicked out. And if you all notice that lovely part of the story where the men say, King, if you let your wife get away with this, what hope do the rest of us have? Gentlemen, ignore that line, okay? <laughs> so he sends out his soldiers to get the most beautiful women in all the kingdom. I could have all you ladies come up here, but that's too many for social distancing. And so this is when Hadassah becomes Queen Esther. Take off your head dress and put this one on. Now. You're the queen now. So Mordecai has overheard this plot, so he has to call at Mordecai. Yay! Yay! Mordecai overhears the plot, and he tells her, you have to warn your husband. So she goes and warns the king. We're not going to tell you what happens to you guys, but you better sit down before it does, okay? Okay. And, and he has those guys, but we're not going to go there. All right. No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. No, 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 no. go back, go back, go back. Now you, you get to leave. Okay. But he knows that he has been saved and spared. But Haman has been good continues to plot. The word Purim, which is this holiday, comes from casting lots to decide when the Jews will be exterminated. Because he hates all of them because he hated one of them. That's what we call the beginnings of racism there, you know? That's how it starts when you say they're all like that. They're all like that. People say that to me about certain groups of people now. They'll say they're all like that. Don't you know that? I said, have you met them all? No. And so, then, Haman has decided he's going to kill all the Jews. Haman. You got to say it like you really mean it. Haman. Yes. Is going to have all the Jews killed. So Mordecai calls his cousin Esther and says, you need to go to your husband and tell him you're a Jew. And she says, oh, no, she, no, not, not yet. Because if he does not extend the scepter to her, if she approaches him without an invitation, then she will be put to death. That's how much power he had, which is why Esther, although she wore a crown, did not have much power. And so she tells Mordecai, I can't do that. He said, if you don't say anything, help will come from our people from another way. But perhaps you have been made queen for exactly this time. Perhaps you've been made queen for such a time as this. So then she says, tell all the Jews in the land to pray, to fast for three days. So three days they fast. Let's all, let's all pray for three days and fast. And she approaches the king. Dum, dum, dum. This is the moment, this is the hour. And he extends... <laughs> he extends... Nope, nope, she doesn't say that. That's, that's not what she says. That's not what she says. That's not what she says. She says, would you please be my guest for dinner? No, 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 no. Forget, no, we're not going to keep the money. They're at it. They're improvising the scripture. 
And then she invites to dinner with herself and the king, Haman. Come to dinner. And they go to dinner, so eat. And the king says, Esther, Esther, what a beautiful meal. Anything you want is yours, even half my empire. Half his empire was a lot of empire, let me tell you that. It was a lot of money. That's how much he loved her. He said he'd give her half the empire. And what does she say to him? Nothing yet about the Jews. She says, come back tomorrow night for dinner, if you don't mind. Let's do this again tomorrow night. And Haman agrees to come back. You guys are spectacular, let me tell you that. Okay, so in the meantime, Haman goes home and says, Mrs. Haman, guess who's gotten to go to the king's palace twice for dinner? And in the meantime, the king is having a bad night and he cannot sleep. He's so worried, so he calls for someone from his court to come. Anybody want to come up and read to the king? Is that Clark back there? Come on up, Clark. Climb on up there and you're going to read to the king. La, 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 la. Get your book out, your royal book, your scroll. Read to him. That's okay. Just pretend. You're just going to pretend. And he's reading the stories of the kingdom and he comes across the one where the king was saved from a plot to assassinate him by who was it who saved him? Mordecai. Mordecai. Yay! You're getting it. See, you're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. Okay, Mordecai. And the king says, I wonder what we ever did to repay Mordecai for his kindness. And they said, nothing we can think of. And so he calls for Haman. Thank you, royal reader. Clark, you can go back now if you'd like. And he says, Haman. Haman. He said, if you wanted to reward somebody for doing something wonderful, what would you do? And Haman says to him, let me think, because he's thinking, oh, I guess I'm going to be rewarded for the wonderful things I've done. Ha! Huh? He says, I think that they should put your royal robe on this person and put this person on your horse and let this person go through the town and everybody could bow to him. And the king says, let's make that so for Mordecai. And Haman says, Rrr. now they go back for dinner the second night. Esther's got this beautiful spread. She's got the pie, the cake, the roast yak, whatever they're eating. Roast okay. yak. And the king says, Esther, Esther, what a beautiful, glorious meal. You can have anything you want up to half my kingdom. And Esther says, oh, please. My loving husband, save my people. I am a Jew. Save my people. I am a Jew. And the king says, who was it who came up with this plot to kill the Jews? And she says, Haman did it. And the, ki <laughs> and the king is so angry, he storms out of the room. Storm out of the room there, king. And at this point, Haman decides he's going to beg the king, and he throws himself at her feet, or sort of pretends to. Okay, don't, don't, don't fall all the way over then. And the king sees that and he says, oh, he's attacking my wife. And he comes in and he says, where's the king? And the king says, take him away. And he says, take Haman away. Okay, you want to be soldiers? Escort him out. Haman hated Mordecai so much that he had gallows built in front of his house so he could watch Mordecai's demise. Guess where Haman has walked to? The gallows. I'm saying that because I'm thinking there are some people here who are not old enough to know what gallows means, and that's a good thing. Thank you. Where can you find the story of Esther? Where can you find the story of Esther? In what book? 
the, the book of Esther. You know who is not mentioned at all in the book of Esther? God is never mentioned once. But God is all over the story. We have a lot to learn from Esther's story about being brave, about trusting God, about trusting the right thing to do. Esther could have kept her secret and she would have been able to keep herself alive, but she trusted God. And so she asked the people to fast. To fast means not to eat or drink for three days while they prayed. And so she was delivered and her people with her. Now the king could not take back his edict. She said, please, please king, I don't need half your kingdom. And she even said to him, I would gladly be a slave. I'd be your slave. Just don't let my people be slaughtered. And he said, I can't take back my edict. Once it's said, it is done. I saw an edict board when I visited Japan. Do you remember when in the history of the world, Japan was closed to the West? They wanted to get rid of the influence of Christians that Francis Xavier had brought to, from Portugal, a Portuguese monk had brought to the shores of Japan. They wanted to get rid of it. And for several hundred years, there were no Westerners in Japan and there was no scripture written in the Japanese language and yet Christianity survived because people told each other the story. And I was in a Christian museum and I saw an edict board that offered a reward for Christians. If you were just a garden variety Christian, how they dealt with you was to hang you upside down head first in a latrine. If you were the head of a church, what they did to you was they let you die the way your Lord had died on a cross. And yet, people knew the scriptures because they memorized them. They told these stories by heart. We've got books in front of us. We just need to open them and know where they are so we can tell people. Don't let your Bible be like King Josiah's scroll. Be so lost that you have to find it. You have to go out searching for it. We've got one more story to tell. It's the story of Ananias. You all probably think it's the story of Saul of Tarsus. But it's the story of a man who was given the authority to go and arrest people who were followers of the way. What was the way? You know what the way was? Belief in Jesus as God's resurrected son. And Paul, who was known as Saul of Tarsus then, was trying to obey God. That's the hard part of the story for me, that he thought he was doing God's will. He thought he was serving God. He was a Pharisee on his mom's side of the family and a Roman citizen on his father's side of the family. But he thought that he was serving God by having these followers of this man Jesus arrested and killed. He stood by when Stephen, the first Christian martyr, was stoned to death. He stood by watching everyone's cloaks as he was killed and he approved. He gave his approval to that. And then he got a letter from Jerusalem from the high priest and took it to Damascus to the ruling authorities there in the synagogue that allowed him to arrest and drag in chains every man or woman who was a follower of Jesus. Jesus had other plans. Saul is on his way to Damascus and suddenly the sky flashes, boom, 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 boom. And he's knocked to the ground and he says, who is this? Because he hears a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Let me ask the little people from VBS. Do you remember what persecute means? It's a big word. What does persecute mean? Yes, Kaylee. It means to hurt someone. And it means to hurt someone in a very organized, ongoing way. To be persecuted. Not the last time the Jews would be persecuted like they were with the story that we read about Esther. But this is a persecution of people who followed Jesus. And that happened for the first few hundred years until Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity. But they were being persecuted. They were being arrested and dragged away. And he says, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who is it talking to me? And he said, this is Jesus. Now, you've got to remember, this is after Jesus was raised from the dead. So if Jesus wants to get your attention and appears to you from his resurrected state, that would get my attention. And Paul sits up, and what happened? He couldn't what anymore? He couldn't see. Now, we had a great time. We wore blindfolds and reached into bags and pulled all kinds of crazy stuff out of a bag the other night at BBS. And we asked what it would be like. What would it be like not to be able to see? be very confusing, wouldn't it? 
it's hard enough in the 21st century not to be able to see. Can you imagine in the first century not being able to see? And so he had to be led by the hand into Damascus. And he goes to the house of a man named Judas in Damascus. And Saul was sent there, and he goes in, and he calls him Brother Saul. Because he said, Jesus, are you sure this is who you want me to heal? This is the guy who's hurting us. He's hurting you. He's hurting all of us who follow you. He can arrest me. I don't know about you, but I think that takes a lot of faith to heal somebody's vision who can't see me, who's an enemy. Because Saul could have opened his eyes and said, you're under arrest. But Ananias went. And he goes into the room and he doesn't just say to him, Saul, you big meanie, you bully, you jerk. What does he say? Brother Saul, Jesus has sent me to you. Receive your sight. And he opens his eyes. He opens his eyes and he opens the eyes in his heart as well, right? And he becomes a follower of Jesus that day, that very day. He hasn't eaten for three days. Just like Esther's people, he fasted for three days, nothing to eat or drink. But the first thing he does when he opens his eyes and he can see and he understands that Jesus is his Savior and his Lord, what does he do? He runs down to the water and he is baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he changes his name, not to hide his identity like Esther had. He changes his name because he wants everyone to know he's a new person. But for the rest of his life and all his writings, and he will write nearly one quarter of what we call the New Testament, would be authored by Paul, the apostle. He says, though I am the chief of sinners, and he always tells who he was before, before he talks about who he is now. And we had a theme verse that we read every night. Can anybody remember the theme verse? Okay. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That comes from the book, the letter to the Philippians. Can we say that together? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't mean you can jump off your roof and fly. It doesn't mean that God's going to give you a pony if you want one. But it means if you face hard times, difficult times, times that are just so hard you don't know how you're going to get through, if you trust God, God will get you through. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul wrote that. Paul, who would go on, to be imprisoned and beaten, who would be snake bit, shipwrecked a couple of times along the way, chased out of towns, hated, despised. But he would write those words, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, I know what it is to have plenty to eat. I know what it is to go hungry. I know what it is to have wealth. I know what it is to have nothing. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you know what? Where would Paul be without Ananias? There's an old hymn that I like called There is a Balm in Gilead. It says, if you can't preach like Jesus, if you can't pray like Paul, you can tell the if you can't pray like if you can't preach like Peter, if you can't pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. Go out in the world being an Ananias, okay? Be an Ananias. Don't worry about being Paul. God will raise up a Paul. God has raised up Pauls. We can all be Ananias, or we can be the kid. I forgot the kid, didn't I? We forgot that story. Oh, Pastor Terry, she's lost her mind. Vacation starts two weeks from today, folks, and then I'll look at the page and read it. We've got to go back and tell that story, don't we? Because you've got to sing that song. We've got the best song. But go ahead and sing the Paul song first, and then we'll go back and pick up that last story. I'm sure Mr. Mike wonders where we are with the PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> 